Today we're going to talk about factoring to solve quadratics. A quadratic just means you have a variable raised to the second power. If 2 is your biggest exponent, then you have a quadratic. Let's look at this simple equation first. If we're going to think about what values of x would make this true, well there are two. x could be 3 and it could be negative 3. So there are two solutions to this equation. When we solve quadratics, many times there are two solutions to the equation. Another thing to know when you're solving quadratics is the zero product property. If you have two factors being multiplied and they have a product of zero, then one of these has to be zero. That's the only way to get zero when you multiply. Either x is zero, or y is zero, or sometimes both. Let's look at this quadratic. We're going to factor it and use the zero product property in order to find the two solutions. Looking at everything on the left side, we want to see if we can factor anything. Since both terms have an x, let's factor an x out of both terms. Now using the zero product property, I know that either x equals zero or x plus five equals zero. This is how I'll find my two solutions. This one's already solved, this one needs a little work. My two solutions are zero and negative five. Let's check our answers. If I plug a zero in for both x's, zero squared is zero, five times zero is zero, and when I add those together, I get zero. Now let's plug in a negative five for both x's. Negative five times itself is positive 25. Five times negative five is a negative 25. So 25 minus 25 is zero. So you can see that both zero and negative five work in this equation. Let's back up and look at one thing here. Some students, when they get to this step, want to divide both sides by x. Now, technically, you're keeping the equation balanced, but when you divide by a variable to cancel it, you end up losing one of your solutions. So don't do that. Let's solve this quadratic equation. This side is set equal to zero, so let's factor this side, and then we can use the zero product property. Remember when we factored, we're looking for two numbers that multiply for a product of 12 and add for a sum of seven. Three and four will work. Now I know that either this or this factor must equal zero. So I'm gonna solve each one by setting it equal to zero. x could equal negative 3 or negative 4. These are the solutions, negative 3 and negative. Let's factor this one and try to solve. Remember this first coefficient is called a. Anytime a is a number other than 1, see if you can factor it out of each term. Can we factor a 3 out of all these terms? Yeah, let's do that to make the problem a little bit simpler. Now that we have three outside the parentheses, we can factor what's inside here. Two numbers that multiply to get 12 and add to get seven are three and four. And we still have our three. Now when you get ready to solve, we have three factors really, but three doesn't equal zero. So we don't really have to do much with this three. One of these has to equal zero. So we'll set both of these equal to zero to find our solutions. When I set x plus three equals zero and x plus four equal to zero, I solve both of those to get my two solutions. Let's try to solve this one. This time, a equals five. I can't factor a five out of all the terms, so I'm looking for two numbers 
that multiply to give me negative 20 and add to give me negative 1. Remember, we get this negative 20 by multiplying a times c. That's the first coefficient times the constant. So two numbers that multiply to give me negative 20 and add to give me negative 1 are negative 5 and 4. So I'm going to rewrite this so I can factor by grouping. This middle term I'm going to split up using these numbers. So I haven't changed anything yet. This still has the same value. I've just taken this middle term and split it into two terms. I'm going to factor each of these groups. The goal of factoring by grouping is that you have the same thing going on here. Now I can rewrite this is 5x plus 4 times x minus 1 equals 0. This is the factored form of this equation. Since it's equal to 0, I know that either 5x plus 4 equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. I'm going to solve both of these. So my two solutions are negative 4 fifths and positive 1. If I plug either one back in here, it'll give me a value of 0. If we're using factoring to solve a quadratic, we have to use the zero product property. So what do we do when it doesn't equal 0? Well, we need to move that over to the left side and make it equal 0. So let's subtract 48 from both sides. And now we'll factor to solve. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us negative 48 and add to give us positive 2. Since we're multiplying to get a negative, we're going to need 1 to be negative and 1 to be positive. 6 and 8 will work. Since we want them to add to give us a positive 2, we'll make 8 positive and 6 negative. Now we can set each of these equal to zero and solve. When I solve each one, I get a positive six and a negative eight. Be very careful because the sign can make your answer correct or incorrect. Some students get in a hurry during this step and think their solutions are negative six and positive eight. That's incorrect. You have to solve to find your final solutions, which are positive six and negative eight. Let's look at one more example. Notice this one has a negative in the front. That's a negative 1 for A. Before we start factoring, let's factor out a negative 1. So I need to divide every term by negative 1. That will give me a positive x squared, negative 22x, and positive 120. Now I can factor what's in the parentheses. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 120 and add to give me negative 22. If they're going to add to give me a negative but multiply to give me a positive, that means they're both negative. 12 and 10 will work. Now I know that one of these factors has to be 0. Negative 1 can't equal 0, so I can kind of ignore it. Now I can set each of these and solve. So when I set each of these equal to 0 and solve, I get two solutions of positive 12 and positive 10. If you're having trouble factoring, you might go back and watch the factoring video to give you more practice.